Because I was thinking, of, so far the um, speakers have been so good. You've all obviously got a very holistic view of hemiplegia. You appreciate parents' perspectives. You all, you know, everything there is about the nice guidelines. So I thought, for the time, if I'm left till the end, by the time I come to speak, there won't be anything new for me to say. So. <laughs> remember this acronym that was bandied around a lot uh, when mass computer use was coming in. Uh, it's deciphered as what you see as what you get is what you get. I never quite worked out what that had to do with anything. But I was thinking one day about how to talk about hemiplegia and then I realised that it worked because in hemiplegia what you see is not what you get. Um, so, he said a child might be physically quite mildly impaired, um, but they might have an awful lot of problems that you don't immediately see. And the parents spend their lives not only dealing with day-to-day um, -day life of hemiplegia, but they then have to try to persuade teachers, neighbours, even their own families that their child isn't lazy or stupid or bad and that they're not bad parents either. And it was this situation that what you see is not what you get and that because of this the children and their families weren't getting the support they needed uh, that led to the foundation of Heavy Health <coughs> which was back um, in 1991. So officially we were 20 years old last year. And it was set up by a handful of parents whose children were subjects of a groundbreaking study by Robert Goodman and Carol Yood in a study into the cause and effects of hemiplegia, which did confirm that these invisible problems were real and common in children with hemiplegia. <clears throat> I joined quite soon after. Uh, my son was too young for the study. I filled in a form, um, a membership form at their very first parents workshop, um, admitting that I was a journalist by profession. And uh, the next thing I knew they were phoning me up saying, well, can you write us some leaflets? <laughs> and uh, I, as you can see, I'm still heavily involved with information and any help. Um, and for example, one of the first things uh, that I wrote with, with Carol Hude uh, was a book for, for primary schools to give to both give parents more information about the educational issues that might arise under their child's endometria and also give them the confidence um, to tell teachers to, to tell teachers about it to get handed to the teachers and be able to then access more support for their child because a parent armed with printed literature is a lot more credible than a parent with soft story and as I said, I'm still the trustee at Hemi Help with an overview of um, information services. So nowadays we have an excellent information <coughs> officer who's sitting back there. Um, and uh, last year, um, Hemi Help Hemiplegia Handbook, which I co authored with Dr. Charlie Fairhurst, came out. Um, as you've heard, I was also a lay member of the NICE Guideline Development. And before the meeting started, oh sorry, I should, should, should you that before. But, um, before the meeting started, I thought the best way to represent um, Hemi Help members was to run a survey of their experience of the NHS. Um, 237 parents responded, which is about 10% of our family membership. So in nice guy, uh, terms, it's obviously not the equivalent of an RCT. But it's probably the largest survey of its kind that's been done. And it turned out to have significant impact on the development of the guidelines, which I'll talk about later. Um, I somehow assumed that people were more likely to complete a survey form if they had a grouch of some kind, but in fact, there was a generally high level of satisfaction with treatments. Um, I'm sure the fact you're here today shows that you are models of good practice and interested in parents, <coughs> but saying obviously doesn't go for, for all your profession. 
um, there were three main concerns that came up. Um, it was interesting because I remember when my son was small and we were having a lot of sessions with various professionals, <coughs> the same things that I was worried about then, and, you know, it's obviously still relevant. So first, continuity of treatment. You see, these are quotes from, from the survey. Um, fewer than half of our respondents were happy with the frequency of physiotherapy. Uh, more than half were seeing a physiotherapist at longer than two monthly intervals. Uh, as you might expect, frequency diminishes with age, but of 56 under 11, under fives, 11 were seeing a physiotherapist um, at intervals of more than <coughs> two months. Um, and 82% of parents were doing exercises with their child at home, but a lot of them didn't feel confident about this um, and thought it was putting a strain on their family life. Now, all of this doesn't necessarily mean that it's uh, that, that a two monthly interval is totally inadequate, but it does suggest that there's a problem about communication with parents um, and it's important to boost parents' confidence and, and encourage them and generally feel that, that they, can, they can make them feel that they are doing the right thing. Um, so one of the things that our survey, various surveys have shown is that parents want to know as much as possible about their child's behaviour. The better informed they are, the better they feel they can support their child. Um, parents were already much better informed than we were a generation ago, thanks to him and other <coughs> organisations on the one hand and the internet in general. Um, but given that each child is different, it's important that they know why this applies to their son or daughter. <coughs> this was the biggie, coordination between clinicians. Um, despite all the talk about teamwork and integrated services, um, when we asked people whether they felt professionals in different treatment areas worked well with one another, 40% of parents answered no. <coughs> and many complained that they themselves were acting as key workers to try, trying to coordinate their child's treatment. <coughs> 